Hey everyone, welcome to The Huddle. I have a really exciting couple guests here I wanted to introduce you to. But first, I want to talk about where we are. We are in a new facility here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And this is a facility, it's about 200,000 square feet that will be making a very, very large number of pounds of tortillas and other great foods inspired by your family and your culture. So I want to introduce you to Veronica and Edgar. Uh, Veronica is the founder, the entrepreneur, uh, the owner, the whole family is involved in this great company called Olay Foods. And we're going to talk about some of the brands and some of the stories. Before I get into this though, I just want the two of you to know something I haven't told you yet. About five years ago, I was in a shareholders meeting with about 18,000 of, of our associates from all over the world. And my job that day was to talk about the Walmart supply chain. So I thought, what, there's no better way to do that than to describe our supply chain through the lens of a taco. And so we talked about using blockchain for pork. We talked about how we farm the shrimp and we talked about the tortillas that were made by this entrepreneur out of Georgia named Veronica. So I do know your story a bit. We have the ability to make opportunities come to life. Yeah. For example, these tasty tortillas, they come from a woman owned supplier, Olay Mexican Foods. And Veronica Moreno, she started the business with just one machine in Atlanta, Georgia. But, yeah. but she worked hard and today her products are on thousands of shelves and she employs hundreds of women. Veronica, maybe I'd love to start with you and just hear the history of the company from 1988 until now and what caused you to decide to get started. Well, we were living in Texas and uh, at that time it was very difficult, the uh, economy. And Eduardo is a painter, he was a painter contractor and uh, uh, his friend invited him to go to Georgia to see if they can find uh, more job. So he went to Georgia with 17 people, you know, and, and he uh, was, couldn't find any tortillas. So in his luggage, instead of taking his clothes, he was taking a lot of tortillas and jalapenos. So I told them, I'm going to have my own tortilleria. And they say, no, run guys, uh, too hard. My father was saying, are you crazy? You're going to do tortillas? So uh, it came the opportunity to start. And in a, I never imagined then uh, I was going to find this place. But I, I started with a very small machine making the tortillas and Edgar was two and a half years old, Eddie was 10 years old and uh, I made the tortillas, I delivered to the store and then I went home and continued with my, with my kids. Eddie uh, was in school and Eduardo was uh, taking him to, uh, to the school and, and then, you know, trying to make all the uh, work at, at home and continue growing. And we moved to another place. And from there, we moved to uh, another facility until we moved the big facility. Right, right. When we start, I wanted to do it by myself because I wanted to make sure. It was, I was a good mother, but I didn't have uh, anything more to show my kids than their mom can do something. So I told Eduardo, I'm going to do it by myself. I'm going to make the tortillas and I'm going to deliver the tortillas. And when it's ready, you're going to be uh, with me all the time. So at that time I told Eddie, uh, well, it's time to be together and Eduardo, uh, start making tortillas with me and it was it was a blessing it was a blessing it, I never imagined that I was going to make so many tortillas <laughs> yeah so many tortillas and have so many people on the team and and your husband's not here today because he's setting up a new operation from exactly. what I understand. yeah back in Georgia that's that's fantastic so Edgar you were two and a half when this little operation started probably I guess in the kitchen um, small scale. Um, what was your first interaction with the company? So my first interaction with the company was uh, kind of an introduction into sales. Um, every every time that my mom would go and, and deliver to mom and pop stores or deliver to a family, 
I was right there with, with her by her side and just kind of seeing the interaction, not really knowing what was going on. And you know, those interactions changed into being in a production facility, falling asleep on pallets while you know, mom was working hard and things of that sort. And you know, it was always, to me, it was, it was a, a part of what, what I did, what my brother and I did. You know, we would play, once we had a, a slightly larger warehouse, we'd play around in the warehouse. And for us, it, it was our playground. And the people that worked in the facility were our family. Uh, they knew us, they saw us growing up. And a lot of those people still are, are, are there with us today. And they saw us from, from little kids to becoming professionals and fully involved into the business. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's just ingrained in us from, from day one. So you were, you were telling me when your family bought the first big facility, the first 100,000 square foot facility, you thought you were going to get a basketball court in the factory. Did, I guess that never <laughs> happened, right? That's right. We walked into the facility. It looked kind of like this, yep. uh, massive, and um, it was empty. And my mother and father were talking to each other, talking to the real estate agent saying, we'll never fill this facility. And my dad looks over at me and I was a basketball nut back then. And he said, I'm gonna put a basketball court in here for you. And I'm like, yes, finally, finally. That never happened, but yeah, we definitely filled it. And uh, a lot of growth came after that. Yeah, so this facility is gonna be set up soon. I see that you have a plan for it and also expansion plans to make the company more vertical. So really exciting to see the growth and your growth story has just been fantastic. But now I'd love to go back to um, the brands, the names. Like what, what inspired you, Veronica, to pick the names like La, La Banderita or the other names that you have on the products? Well, at first, the, the package, uh, it was named uh, Su Preferida, but the customer named La Banderita. It was the customer because we were saying all the time in the commercials and uh, in the um, newspapers and everything, uh, we were saying, uh, look for la banderita, you know, the flag. And the customer was, you know, you, you ask them, what is the name of the product? And they didn't know. They call them la banderita. So I decided to change and put la banderita. Listen to the customer. <laughs> yeah, good lesson yes. there. <laughs> it was the customer. Yeah, very good. And so your relationship with Walmart goes back a while. Um, what, you know, either one of you talk about how you started with us and, and then where we are today. So the, the relationship with Walmart, uh, Walmart has always been a, a partner to us. Um, it, th that relationship started in, in the carpet capital of the world in, in Dalton, Georgia. One store uh, and, and my mom's persistence, of course, she, she had to knock at that door quite a few times. Uh, but when that door swung open, she didn't walk through it. She busted through it. And uh, basically, she, she wanted to prove that she had the best tortillas in the marketplace. And uh, she, again, you know, we, w with the help of the, the, the diversity team and also Walmart merchants, uh, us being able to, and my mom being able to prove that, you know, we were going to be a staple for, for the Mexican community in the Southeast, uh, merchants and the diversity supplier team helped us kind of scale from there. And we started in the Southeast and we scaled slowly west all the way to the to the West Coast. And now, you know, our products are available in 3,800 stores across the nation. Um, and, and we're super excited about that. Um, you know, Walmart uh, not only has been a partner to Olay, but a, a partner to me. Mom, again, wasn't very shy about bringing me along in sales calls when I was a teenager and when I was in my 20s. She would even bring me to Walmart reviews with Samuel. And, uh, you know, she would tell me, you need to wear this. You need to sit there, you need to listen, and don't speak unless you're spoken to. And I'm like, okay, okay. I don't know if I did a good job in the sales calls at all, but what I do know is I learned a lot and it didn't take long for me to start talking in those meetings, but it was, it was a heck of an experience and it kind of brought me up. I'm guessing by the growth, I guess you did okay. Yeah, yeah. Did. Thing, you did okay, yeah. So <laughs> framing up the business, so you started in the Southeast trying to be a great brand, great product for Mexican Americans. You're now national. Um, talk about what it's like to be a part of Latinx community and the role you play in inspiring other entrepreneurs and other startups. It's, I mean, we all know that a large part of the startups in the country the last few years have been led by Mexican Americans. So you're just one of the, these great American stories that did this. So what do you, how do you help other parts of your community see how you've done it and bring them along? Well, I explained to a lot of our uh, employees and uh, thank God they, they're with me all the time. And uh, they want to do so many things. And uh, I feel like uh, I'm the ex inspiration for them because uh, 
uh, I tell them, don't be afraid. If you have a dream, you have to follow that dream. Yeah, you have to just let people see the most they can be. And, and one of our, our goals at the company over the last 10 years or so, we had a, a goal to grow our U.S.-based sourcing for products that are made, assembled, or manufactured in the U.S. by $250 billion. We did that. We've now increased it to $350 billion over the next 10 years. So there's a large appetite for products that are made, assembled, or grown here. Um, so we're really looking forward to this, but you are an example of what all is possible. So you know, maybe for you, Edgar, just talk about um, what's next for the company. You've grown with a few lines, I'd say a few lines, a lot of lines, but a few brands in the, in the tortilla space, but you also have other products and you're thinking about future growth and expansion. Yeah, so uh, big message here. Uh, you know, we're, we're sitting in, in one of our future new facilities, uh, 200,000 square feet here, another facility coming online this month uh, in the West Coast. So soon we'll be adding 295,000 square feet of production space, uh, 1,000 new employees within the next five years, and we'll have the production capabilities to add 1.5 billion pounds of corn and flour tortillas over the next five years. So that's really, really exciting for us. Um, it, it's just a, a, a big direction, a big transition for, for, for us to continue to grow. Um, you know, the, the, our brands have always resonated with, you know, the Latin community, the Hispanic community. And as things have shifted over the course of years and now, you know, buyer frequency amongst, you know, just general market consumers have really shown us that, you know, our plans to grow are, are, are viable. And, you know, we, we are a family owned business for us, but for us to continue to grow, um, it, it's there for us. And, and we've made those investments. And, you know, last month we were at the supplier growth forum and we heard you guys loud and clear that you guys, that Walmart needs product availability. And that was music to our ears. You know, we already had these, these plans underway. And the, the most exciting part of, of these plans is, you know, 25% of that new production uh, capacity is gonna come online in 2022. And we're just ready for, for, for the next steps for us. And you know, again, it's just exciting. Yeah, the growth is exciting. And, and for everyone who uh, now has had a chance to meet the two of you, uh, this is a great example of what's possible from one store to 4,000 stores, all these locations, the lines, the innovation. It's a really great success story. So congratulations to the two of you, your brother, your, your husband, your dad. Uh, it me means a lot to us that you've stayed close to us and uh, looking forward to continued success. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.